Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna tie a new version of the uh, Bucktail Changer. Bunch of articulations, two hooks. It's gonna be a nice, uh, nice large uh, fly that's gonna swim like a, uh, like a swim bait. So uh, get this going. We got a 20 millimeter uh, light wire shank with a fast hatch already in. 150 denier uh, power thread in black. We're gonna go for a little darker look on this one. Uh, we'll do a uh, black and orange. Good musky, uh, good musky color for darker water. So we get some uh, polar reflector flash in uh, orange. Tie it in. It's gonna be a little too long, so we're gonna cut it after. Wrap it around. By brushing the fibers back. Tie it in. This is going to be a little longer video, so I'm going to try and cut it into some uh, smaller segments because we're going to do three articulations like this. I'll show you how to do one and then you can do the others. We got this like that, and we'll take this out, just because this is gonna be a little too long for what we wanna do. And you can come and cut it close to the fast thatch. You can use some smaller chenille too, I just don't have any smaller chenille in, uh, in orange, so this will do. And there won't be any video for a little bit now because I'm currently living in Hungary and uh, me and my wife are moving in a couple days, I'm going back to France for a couple weeks and then I'm flying back to Canada uh, early May so probably not going to have time to set up all my, uh, all my fly tying stuff and I'm just going to fish there. For a couple weeks in France and then go back home ready for the pike tournaments and the, the good fishing. So we'll take a uh, clump of a black deer hair belly. Take a nice clump. Take all the longer fibers out. You can stack this too if you want it to be flush but I don't. I don't like it when it's flush behind. Here you come take your stack, measure it till the a little bit before the fast hatch. Go one, two loose wraps, hold it and then push with your thumb or with your index finger and then tie it down. So it goes all the way around the hook or the shank. Move your thread forward. Then we're gonna cut this. Cut all the excess. Got my big scissors here. My wife took my small scissors. All right, then you just want to come cover. The hairs. Perfect. We'll finish this baby. It's gonna look sweet with the black and orange. Not sure what kind of head we're gonna do yet, but it's probably gonna be all black with orange body and then we're gonna put a nice bright orange head on it. So you got your first step. We're gonna do this three times with so two other small shanks. You guys know how to do this, yeah. Put the shank in. Boom. 
it out. That's it. We'll put some glue on it. I'm just showing you so I don't have to show you three of the same exact steps. And then you can either do the hairs a little longer, but try and get a nice uh try and get a nice taper, you know. You got this one right here. Did a bunch of nice colors on this, I'll show you guys later. So you do this three times. Apply glue every time. We'll be back for the next step. All right, so you should have ended up with this. Three sections. And then we'll put a, uh, this is a five watt uh, B10S in the vise. You can use any uh, size you want. I've got some tight on some two watts, some three odds, some doesn't really matter. And you'll take some wire. You can also use any type of wire you want. Because this doesn't matter because we're not uh, going to apply pressure to this. So it's not like there's another hook back there. You want it to be extremely secure and strong. Put the wire in. Take three pieces that you've tied. Like the tie on the side, so you can get a vertical uh, tie on your on your wire. Go all the way back, so it still moves freely. So you want this secure, but this doesn't really matter. Cut it off. Go. Then you can glue this if you want, but don't really have to. Again, but I will. That means a little break and we'll be back when it's dry. There we get this part dry. Your thread back, the same kind of steps. Use some chenille, some polar reflector flash that's cut already, so I don't want it to be too long. Polar this. Perfect. You can cut all the, the long ones too. It's much easier when you have the right length uh, chenille, but I don't in this color, so that's what I want to do. All right, we'll take some uh, deer belly again. Decent clump of it. Take the under fur. Out, much easier to tie. And then tie this a little longer. It's gonna come cover, get a nice taper to it. One, two turns, and then take my index, push it. You can use your thumbs or your thumb and index to help you. And then cinch down. Trim. I'm so excited to uh, go back to Montreal, flying back after last time I was there, it was in August. I travel a lot for my job, so I'm usually out in Europe for about nine to ten months. Uh, the year 
and I fly back to Montreal in May when Pike opens. Really important. <laughs> and uh, we're done with the step. Put some glue again. On the live this year, I'm mostly excited for the for the bass fishing. Bass fishing last summer was just absolutely unbelievable. Bass opens in mid uh, mid June in Quebec, so we got a little bit of time. We got a month and a half to wait from pike opening to bass opening, but plenty of action too with the all the pike we have in the Montreal area. Excited to do a nice little tournament too. We do the Muskies Canada. Uh, pike tournament, so that should be extremely fun as well. Even though we didn't do, I haven't done too good in that tournament the past couple years. But uh, yeah, so it is. Sometimes you, especially early early season for the fly guys, it's a little a little more complicated. But we'll try and get it done this year. We'll see what we can do. Take our chenille again. Now you can start taking the longer ones, you don't have to go as short. Palmer this thing. I've got the worst, worst memory from the Muskies Canada tournament. A couple of years ago we got, there was about, what, 60 kilometer an hour winds on the St. Lawrence River and it was about what five six degrees the water was freaking freezing we fished for about four hours and then our batteries died we tried to cross the river to go back to the launch and we couldn't cross there was waves about six to seven feet high so we had to go all the way around to uh the New York State and then cut in Ontario and then drive the whole way uh, east after again. It took us almost four hours to come back to the boat launch. We were both soaked on the boat. It was not a fun experience at all. And we caught, what, two fish? So yeah, it was a joke. But that's what's fun about the tournaments. Uh, and then we'll just take some regular black uh, bucktail. And we'll tie this in reverse, but not the real reverse, if you know what I mean. I just want the bulk to be nice and progressive on this fly. I want it to be super bulk, or not bulky in the back, and then it's time to get super bulky again right away. Get a nice, nice bulky head on this, so it kicks nicely. Measure it so we got a good taper. Measure it again to make sure. About here. Cut it. Just spin my thread so it digs into the to the bucktail. these things out of the way. Two, two loose wraps, and then use your thumb to get that bucktail on the hook. And it sits down. I like to bring my thread forward, do some loose wraps, and then cinch down. You always want to check how far away you're from your eye. I'm trim this a little bit. I'm going to leave a little bit of space there so you can bring your thread back to the start. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm going to spin this. Reverse this hair. And you can play around with it, move the hairs. 
where you want them to be. Squeeze them, hold them back hard, and then bring your thread on the bucktail. Do two or three wraps, and then cinch down, and then get a nice ball for We can't really see with my beard, huh? Shit. Try and stand up a little more. Some good wraps, and then bring your thread forward. Whip finish. Cut it. Put this on so the hairs get touched. Then put some glue. Again, we'll let this dry, and I'll be back shortly. Not shortly for you guys. It can be edited, but you know what I mean. All right, all right. This is dry. Let's get this going. Next step is going to be a 35 millimeter shank, a heavy shank, so the big game ones, because this is attached to a hook that's going to be attached to the shank, to the front hook. So the fish is hooked on the back hook. You want something strong that's not going to fail. And wrap. Okay, wrap the chenille up. I like to wrap it up to the first uh, bit of shank. You know how it's separated, the way it's cut. I tie the chenille to there, cut it off, cover it, and then can brush it as well so it's nice and clean. There you go. Take some bucktail again. Mostly the same steps every time. Repetition, a lot of repetition. Just make sure to get a nice uh, nice taper to your flies when you're using bucktail, it's really important. I want your fly to look natural. I measure this. Here's almost the whole length. But that's not too long. It's a different tail for the next. So I'll reverse tie. Spin your thread. One, two. Use your thumb, get around. Careful when you put in the uh, shanks in your in your vise, it tends to move. Hold it. Or you can tie it sideways. So when it, if it's sideways, it's not gonna move. It's like this, it might move. Same thing. I'm gonna, just call this the fake reverse tie then. Go back a bit and bring it forward. Loose wraps and then tie down. And then bring your thread a little bit behind. Reverse tie. A little tricky on these shanks come and grab the whole bucktail, massage it nicely. And then pull it over two or three wraps, then secure it. Thread forward. Uh, put my glue here. Some glue on that step. A little break. All right, same thing again. Chenille. 
tie it in. Not gonna put too much. This color is gonna look really, really nice. Thought about it this morning. Been wanting to do this video for a little bit, but didn't have much time. I've been tying a lot of bass flies since I'm so excited, like I told you guys already. Bass season, even though it's in like three months, but that's how it is every year. We'll take some more black bucktail after this. It's hard to find some decent black bucktail. Black and white is just so hard. Like chartreuse and fluorescent yellow and all these bucktails is fairly easy, but I don't know why the the white, the fluorescent white. You can get some natural whites, but I like the fluorescent white. Fluorescent white is extremely hard to get in Europe, and the prices now in Europe is outrageous. I just can't wait to go back to America. Freaking, it's like 17 to 20 euros for a freaking tail now. I can't even believe it. Like, I feel like two years ago, paid six, seven euros for a tail, and now you're talking three, four times the price. It's outrageous. And when you order online too, you don't know what you're getting. So, might be getting a bunch of tails that you don't like, or the, the hairs are not right. So... Spending 20 euros on a freaking tail that you get and it's absolute garbage hairs. It's fairly annoying, so I'm excited to go back to America to go find and pick out the tails that I want in the fly shops. And it's much cheaper too. Much cheaper. I use so much bucktail that it's starting to get fairly expensive to make these uh these big flies, especially all the all the musky guys, you know, ton of bucktail. That's why you know we want to use, you know, some. I use a lot of the chenille for the steps in the middle. Because if you do this whole thing in bucktail, oh my god, have to sell these flies for three times the price. All right, same thing. Reverse tie. Fake reverse tie. I don't even know what to call this, to be honest. Paul Monaghan kind of came up with this technique. I think it's him. Been using it for a couple years now, and I absolutely love it. Use less thread, and you can really uh, control and make your flies flare, but don't make him as bulky as a, a reverse tie. You can do it with a normal reverse tie too, but you're gonna use so much thread to bring all that hair back. Perfect, looking good. Really like this orange popping out in the middle of the bucktail. With finish. And then put some glue as always. And we'll have one step left. That's gonna be the head, the front hook. Be using a big boy. Got an eight aught BMX Veravas. Big boy hook for the front. Let this dry and I'll be back again. All right, so we put a eight o BMX in the vise, and we've tied a sixty pound. Uh, coated wire on with a six millimeter bead. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. Have you seen this in my other videos? As I said, this video is going to be a little longer, so I'm going to try and cut like I can't. And take a clump of black and a reverse tie.
two wraps, same as before. Let's go for a third, secure it. Your thumb and index, turn it around, then cinch it up. I just want to get a bigger clump of bucktail on the step just to cover the articulation nicely. Like when it's nice and clean, you don't see any hole. I have to clean this up. It's a great tool to have. Hair clips. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have some near your bench, so it makes life much much easier when you're tying with bucktail. Same with this, your articulation. You can come clamp it on your vise. Cut the excess bucktail, leave a little mount, a little clump. You can do the fake reverse tie. I really like the look of the fake reverse tie because, uh, no, it's just not as, it's not as big, not as bulky. And it really makes that fly glide, I find. You guys can do whatever. Then we'll reverse this. Massage it. Careful the hook point. You spin your thread, it digs into the bucktail much easier for this step. Right. Cut this done. Perfect. Some glue. Dry, put the reflector flash. And we're gonna put quite a bit on this step. We got two more steps of bucktail to finish this fly and then dubbing and eyes. We'll tie the two next step in regular reverse to get a nice bulky head this is enough cut this off Oh, there's a lot, so some of them get stuck underneath. There you go. Take a decent clump of uh, bucktail again. Black as always. Clean this up. Get all the short hairs out. I need to cut this. Two, since down a bit, the third one. Look around. 
sit down. Yo, first tie. That's what I mean when it's easier to do a fake reverse. But I want to try and get some nice bulk up front. Get a nice, create a nice thread dam. You're happy with it. This, some glue. The glue is not necessary, but if you want your flies to last a while with these pairs, it's going to be for musky, so, or pike. If you're in an area that's a big ass fish, I'll just make it last longer. It'll be nice. Some little longer hairs. Hey, these black surf. Some of them are okay, some of them are freaking terrible. Same thing with the whites, it's so hard to find. I have to cut this and try and find a different tail. Got about like 10 of these, but hard to find a good one. We got a pretty decent clump, so. Don't go too far up. Leave some space for the dubbing. Reverse tie again. Sometimes you need three. Big mess. Reverse tie this. Pretty heavy clump, so massage it nicely, and you have to create decent thread dam to stop this from flaring too much. I like to make it nice and even so I don't have just a big cone. You know, I said it uses much more thread with this technique. And honestly, I think you get the decent or uh, the same kind of volume and bulk with a uh, fake reverse tie. What do we got here? Got some decent, decent bulk up front. A nice orange. Probably finish this. Put some glue and then the last step is gonna be some dubbing. I don't have any black uh, Nightmare Musky Flies Titan dubbing, but I think we'll do some uh, fluorescent orange. Might put some even some stripes on it with some uh, marker after. I think it's gonna look pretty good with some large orange or maybe some red eyes. Nah, figure it out. Let this dry and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the dubbing. Alright time to finish this head with uh, some Titan dubbing. These are the monster packs of orange. Wish I had some black and with some orange accents for this, but I think this orange head's gonna look good and we'll put some black stripes on it. You take a decent clump and we're gonna tie this in half half as we always do. Make 
sure it's even on both sides. The hair clamps really help to not get any bucktail on this. One sticking out, just pop it off. Flip it over. Orange. Clump. Rip that forward a bit. Fold the top part. Thread through for the bottom part. Then finish this off. Put a little thread down in front if you want. Whip finish. Cap brush. This doesn't look like anything right now, but cap brush. Brush it out. Get all those unwanted hairs in it. Fibers. So you always got some. It's gonna look nice. So the first color I've made like this. I showed you guys the blue one. I really love this uh, purple and white, the black head. This is one of my favorite colors. So you guys all know. Love this color. Made a rainbow trail one as well. This one's a little longer. It's got a, one extra articulation. That's it. So let's put the eyes on. I think we're going to put some 14 millimeter eyes on these. So bigger fly, bigger head. Got the black and gold. A little bit of orange in there too. Take some gel. I always use gel super glue for the eyes. They stick much better. Then a regular uh, zappa gap. Put the eye straight in line with you. Put your thumb, fold it back, and then leave it there. Apply some pressure with your thumb and your index so you really <laughs> get that eye in there and it's not going to move. Perfect. Flip it around, same thing, get the eye of the hook in line with you. Same technique. Then push. I'll speed up the resin um, part so you guys have the weight. Listen to me, I'll accelerate it. And this fly is gonna be over. I'm gonna have to put the black stripes on it after. Hopefully it looks good. First time I do this color, but freaking looks really nice, I like it. I always like to wet my dubbing before I apply uh, the resin. And also, like I showed you, couple of the other videos incline it like this so the resin doesn't fall into the eye. Alright, I'm gonna speed this up. We're gonna take solar res uh, medium for this. Let's get this going. All right, so we got some uh, paint markers. Let's go with the stripes on this one. See how that looks. Perfect. 
when you're using paid markers like this on dubbing, you don't have to like apply it like this. You can just gently press when you start uh, applying it like a normal uh, marker. All the hairs or all the fibers of the dubbing are. Sorry, I'm battery. Battery died on the camera. So we were at this. Some stripes on one side. Flip it over. Start tapping it again. this look flip it around the same thing on the other side careful not to touch the uh, areas that you've already marked since it's paint paint markers takes a little bit of time to to dry so careful with that there you go we're done Done with this big boy. Take a look at this. A nice stripe head. Really good articulation. Then you got your fast dash, so you can put any tail you want on there. Guys that like feathers, just take a bigger fast dash, a number one instead of a number zero. Tie some feathers on there. I showed it last time. I don't know where they are right now, but um, it's super easy to do. I don't know. Super easy to do, but look at this head. Perfect. Perfectly in line with the hook point. Perfect, it's gonna kick like crazy. Got that darker color with the orange accents. I like this a lot. Sweet. Try this on some Canadian musky. See what they think about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little longer, but it's a really big fly with a lot of steps. So, uh, as I said, I won't be posting any videos for a couple weeks because I'm driving back to France and then uh, flying back to Montreal in like a month. So, uh, got a lot of shit to do, but I'll be back soon. See ya.